What is up, everybody? Shane here, checking in. Let me get over here to my correct uh, windows so I can see who all is in the house today. Kind of a weird time for a call. Thought we'd try something different this week. Uh, you should be seeing me on your screen right now. My audio is working. All right, my audio is definitely working, but let me get some confirmation from you guys to see if you can hear me. I see uh, Crystal is here. I see JJ Mayo got his hat ticket last week. Super excited to see you, JJ, when we get to flip your life live. I see Tanya. TC Miller is in the house. See Chad. What's going on, Chad? Hey, Jennifer. Hi, Shay. What is happening? Shay says, I can hear you. Everything sounds good. My lighting is a little weird. I got my uh, lighting up here, but I got some wicked light coming through my window over to my right. So I'm not really worried about it, though, because it ain't got to be perfect. It's just got to be done. So this half of my face over here is just going to have to be brighter. That's just the way it is. It's going to have to be brighter, okay? TC Miller says, I can't. TC, it might be on your end. If somebody could throw in a uh, thing in the chat there, it looks like a couple everybody can hear us. But TC, weird. All right, lighting looks fine. All right, Monty, thanks, man. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Hope you are good. Super excited to get this training. Sorry about last week. Minor malfunction. I did manage to get a new computer. Um, I do have a new MacBook Pro, and uh, I'm trying to figure it out because, uh, man, these new MacBook Pros, it took all the holes off of them. There's no USB ports. There's no anything. It's just this USB-C, which is the future of online connectivity. But guess what? The future isn't now because you have to have, like, one of these little dongles for every single thing out there. And um, half the stuff doesn't even work. <laughs> so uh, I've got my new MacBook Pro fired up. I've got everything, I think, uploaded back on it. And I am not getting any water anywhere near this computer. Because last week, literally right before everything was happening, I went like this, knocked a whole glass of water on my keyboard. My speaker started sparking and acting crazy and going, making weird noises. And I destroyed a MacBook Pro. But that MacBook Pro, has I've had it since 2015. So... May it rest in peace. I'm going to try and get it refurbished for my son. So my son may may end up getting a refurbished MacBook Pro out of the deal. Okay. All right, guys. Um, the schedule below, I've got it actually written a little backwards. Last week, we talked about CPR, giving your business CPR. Uh, we talked about, <laughs> JJ said, fluke accident. Hydration is important. That's the health guy. He's here trying to make me be healthy. Um, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. Last week, I talked about CPR, man, Con uh, being consistent, prolific, and relentless consistently creating content, at least on a weekly basis, uh, prolifically promoting that content and relentlessly selling to your list. Like those are the three big components that we always talk about that make people successful online. If you can do those things, eventually things will work out. It may be experimenting with different pieces of content. It may be experimenting with different kinds of um, promotion. It may be experimenting with different kinds of sales. Maybe it's webinars, maybe it's email marketing, maybe it's phone sales, whatever's going to work for you. That's what you have to do, right? Because the only thing we do is what we have to do. But this week I wanted to expand on that just a little bit. Um, got a lot of questions last week, a little bit overwhelmed with this consistently creating content, prolifically creating content. And, uh, let me move my windows around just a little bit here. I'm trying to get them situated where I can see not only the chat room, but I can see my notes as well. So let me get the chat room open. I've got it. Okay. And then let me come back over here to my notes. I did something wrong. Hold on a second. Let's see here. I'm trying to find my notes. Where are my notes go? See, this new map book's a little different. Little different. A little different, y'all. All right, there it is. Okay, I got it. Coming over here. I hope, too, as you watch me do these live trainings, you realize that all of your fears about doing live trainings or any trainings at all should go right out the window because mine are pretty much constantly uh, chaotically beautiful. That's what I like to say, chaotically beautiful. Like, you know, you, you don't have to be all prim and proper and professional and have great everything and this, that, and the other. It's all about the content. It's all about what you're doing. It's all about how you're helping people. Okay. Um, as always, if you got any questions today, ask them as we go. So this week, last week was CPR, more of the big strategy. I want to be real tactical this week and talk more about content. Um, I was going to talk about sales funnels, but I started thinking about it. And I think we really need to go into how to create all of this consistent, prolific content. It can be really overwhelming when you're thinking about all of the different work that you have to do. 
to be everywhere, right? Have you ever heard that before? Uh, being everywhere means, wow, Shane and Austin are on Facebook. Wow, they're on Instagram. Wow, they're on Twitter. Wow, they have a podcast. Wow, they're putting YouTube videos out. Wow, they got blog posts. How in the world do they email us every day? Like, how does all this work? How It seems like they're working all the time, but they're not, right? How are they so consistent, so prolific, and how can I do that too, right? Like, that's the big question we always get. I was just talking to, uh, I think I saw her yet, Crystal's here. Just talking to Crystal earlier. Crystal. Uh, is in our Voxer program, and she has done a great job of creating her course, taking massive action, starting to build an email list, getting subscribers, starting to be consistent with her, her blog. And we were just talking today about being more consistent and more prolific to kind of get that message out there and make things kind of happen, right? And that's what I want to really flesh out today is how I do this, how I think about this, and how you can think about it too. So I'm All right, let's see if I'm back. Let me go and see if I'm back. Brand new computer. Let's see if I'm back. I look like I'm back. Am I back? Tell me I'm back in the chat. Give me some chat confirmation that I'm back. See, that's how you do it. You just roll back in like nothing happened. Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> God, uh, the, my computer just decided to restart out of nowhere. I have no idea why that happened and it may happen again so if it does sit tight everything's going to be all right okay all right back to what i was talking about okay once we jump right back in here so what we're going to do is i'm going to talk about how to basically create like 12 weeks of content in like six hours like that's that's what i'm trying to fix trying to uh, help you do here. i want you to learn how to create content faster maybe think about some processes that you can use um, this we actually did this training um last year like six months it was like the third training for flip your life live 2018 i was looking back over my notes for it and i was like man i've got to add this uh, to the cpr first as a review and also to help everybody that's new so they can learn how to do this too so i want to help you learn a little bit more about content and how you can basically take your content and put it in a hundred different areas okay all right so the first rule of content is that everything doesn't have to be brand new. We want to reuse, recycle, and repurpose our content 
in as many platforms as possible. It's just like television even. Like, you know, you may watch a, t uh, a show and it appears on multiple networks, or, or that's because they're different networks are paying for that, right? Or you may see a rerun for a show, right? It's not about creating hundreds of thousands of hours of new content. That's not what you want to do as you're growing your brand, as you're as you become a content marketer guiding new people to your products and services, okay? I'll give you an example of something Joss and I are getting ready to do before we get into this uh, uh, strategy. Joss and I are about to uh, air classic episodes of the Flip Lifestyle podcast. So we were looking at our calendar and we're looking at different ways to expand our audience and to take advantage of all this content that we've created. And also, Apple Podcasts has made a lot of changes lately and they are rewarding people who have multiple episodes a week. They are rewarding people who are who are basically more prolific, okay? So I don't think that one podcast a week is going to just work forever. It's still going to be good. You can still promote it. You can still get traffic to it. But I think you're, we're all going to have to, like, add layers to it. It's just like what YouTube did a while back. YouTube is really rewarding daily streamers. They're just, like, big time. Twitch, the video game channel, is rewarding daily streamers because that produces more people on the platform. It gives people daily reasons to show up. Therefore, they get rewarded. So for podcasting, we said, hey, we need to add episodes. So yes, one thing we're going to do is maybe batch some newer episodes to companion with our interviews. But we have hundreds of episodes now. We have 100 episodes that don't even show up in iTunes because they're older. They're just older episodes. iTunes only lets you show 200 episodes, so they roll out. So we said, hey, we need to take those episodes, take the best episodes out of those hundred, right? Um, to make maybe the top half of the episodes based on downloads, based on um, use, like how many people have actually listened to them. And then we need to download those, re-upload those with maybe some intros and outros. And we need to call those Flip Lifestyle Classic Episodes, right? So we might say, hey, here's a classic episode you may have missed. Episode 15 on, I don't know, sales funnels or whatever on Facebook ads or uh, this interview with so-and-so, right? So we're going to take those episodes, download them, add an intro and outro, re-upload them, okay? We're thinking about actually making lead magnets for each one of them and that being the outro. So if, like if we talked about, you know, uh, setting goals for your business, we might include a little goal worksheet or something. And we're going to repurpose those. So the beginning might say, hey, this is Shane and Jocelyn. I'm super excited to bring you this classic episode of the Flip Lifestyle Podcast. If you're new to the show or if you haven't listened to this episode or maybe you just haven't listened to it in a while, we wanted to make sure you didn't miss it. So tune in right now. Here's an, here is a Flip Lifestyle Classic, blah, 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 the subject matter. Okay. So we're going to repurpose all this content to one, help us rank higher in iTunes, get more content out there, bring that content to the surface because 90% of people haven't listened uh, to 90% of our podcast and 90% of your followers and your readers haven't seen 90% of your content. So we're going to find ways to reuse and repurpose that content uh, up to the top. Okay. So if you're someone who has a lot of content, got a lot of old content, reusing content is really good. But what about creating the content? How do we have time to be a prolific content creator or even a consistent content creator? Well, here, here's the method that I use. I, I don't know if I can copy and paste this. I'm just going to go through it. All right. All right. So if anyone could, when I say like step one, if someone could type this in the chat for me, that would be good. And I will try to uh, share this list with you guys on an email later. Okay. All right. So I'm going to teach you how to prolifically con create massive amounts of content uh, really, really fast, uh, up to 12 weeks of content in about six hours. All right. All right. The first thing is research a topic or a keyword that you know is getting searched for. You guys have heard me talk about this all the time, but you've got to do your research first before you create content, okay? Especially if you're a blogger or a writer or you're doing YouTube videos about specific topics, like you want to make sure that you're researching it. Step one, research what you're doing first. Make sure people are looking for it. You know, there's an old saying, uh, they said, they asked Abraham Lincoln um, if he had uh, six hours to cut down a tree, how would he do it? And he said, I'd spend the first five and a half hours sharpening my ax, right? Well, that's what research is when you're researching your content. If, if you can look up topics and keywords that you know people are looking for, you're much better off 
uh, being able to create content. You're much be able to, uh, you're going to get a lot more traffic out of that just from doing the topic or the research. Okay. All right. So step one is always do your research. Make sure you're choosing topics that you know people who might be interested in your thing are looking for. That doesn't mean it's hyper specific, right? Um, I see Jennifer's here. Jennifer does uh, high intensity yoga. Jennifer, you need to research things about yoga. You need to find people who might be interested in yoga and maybe they're also interested in high intensity workouts and then you move them toward high intensity yoga through your content, right? You might write an article about the five best types of yoga. One, two, three, four. Oh, the fifth one's yours and you sell it, right? Okay. All right. So step one, research your topic and keywords that people are looking for. Thank you, Shay. Appreciate that. All right. Now, here's where the magic happens. What kind of content are we going to create? This is going to make some of you nervous. There's only three types of content. There's video, there's audio, and there's text, period. That's it. You are either a YouTuber, a podcaster, or a blogger, or all of the above. Even if you only share on Facebook, you're blogging. That's what you're doing, okay? You record Facebook Lives, guess what? You're making video. Are you a YouTuber? You're doing video. Are you a podcaster? You're making audio. There's not, um, if you go into our training area, if you watch a course, that's a video. If you read the post that goes to the course, that's text. If you listen to the MP3, that's audio. There's only three things that we can do, okay, online to create content. That's it. So if we start in one place, we can actually make all of our content one time. So think about this. If you make a video, we're going to start with video. This is step two. Make a video, all right? The cool thing about a video is you have the visuals of the face, of the PowerPoint, of the whatever, and you have the audio. And let's let's say we make a 10 to 20 minute video on YouTube or whatever. We, we, let's just say we make the video. Don't even worry about if it's on YouTube yet, but that's the best place to start, okay? Once we create that video, we already have everything we need for all the other forms of content. We don't have to make any more content. We just have to get it into all of the places where people like to consume it. If you've got a, you know, if you've got an audience of any kind, some of them are going to want to watch video. Some of them are going to want to listen to the audio only. And some of them are want to watch the text. It's just like a book. Some people love to read a good book. That's the text. Some people love to listen to the audio book. I don't read books. I don't read the actual text. I listen to the audio book. I buy the paperback. And then I go back and look at what I want. I skim. Okay. But then some people just want to watch the movie. Some people love to read Harry Potter. Some people love, love to listen to Harry Potter. And some people just want to go watch Harry Potter on the movie theater. Right? Video, audio, and text. That's how everything works. Starting with video in online business gives you the power to create everything else without having to do it twice. Okay. All right, so step two, one is make a YouTube video, 10 to 20 minutes. Don't make it really super long, okay? Up to 30 is about your maximum, okay? And then you put that on somewhere like YouTube. All right, the next thing we can do is we can strip the audio from the video, and that's what we release as our podcast, okay? Now, we actually do this step backwards. Jocelyn and I, Jocelyn doesn't like to be on camera a lot, especially when we're doing our podcast. So what we do is, we go and get, we record the podcast uh, audio only, and then we just take that and put it on YouTube, okay? So you can do this one of two ways. You can add pictures, you can make a PowerPoint that goes with it, whatever. Um, but, but it's easier if you start with the video, and now you have a YouTube video, and then you strip the audio and you make it your podcast, okay? Now here's a tip. Keep that in mind as you do the video because you want to be very descriptive and you don't want to lose people while you're talking about the actual topic. So even if you have an image on your screen, even if you're looking you know, at the screen, you want to basically say, hey, describe everything that's happening just in case someone's only listening to audio. I would bet some of you are not looking at the screen right now, right? Who is not looking at the screen right now? Who is just listening to the words that are coming out of my mouth, right? If you're doing that, then you are an audio consumer. Maybe you're folding laundry, maybe you're working on something else and you're just kind of listening into the training, right? But right now you are the video and the audio, you're consuming it. Okay. Exactly. Me, Jay, yeah, TC me. See, I know you guys. I know you guys. Some people are watching. Some people are looking. That's fine. All right. Half and half. There you go. Right. So we're just going to give people a lot of different ways to consume the same piece of content. That's what we're doing. That's called a content explosion. We want to give everyone in our audience a way to consume the content every time we make something. All right. So make a YouTube video. You've got a YouTube video. Strip the audio, make a podcast. All right. Now, 
take that audio file, upload it to a website like rev.com, have it transcribed, okay? Quit being cheap. It only costs a few dollars and it saves you a few hours. Trade dollars for hours in this case, right? If you can spend $10 and get back, you know, two hours of your life of, uh, you know, writing a blog post, it's worth it. It's totally worth it. It'll make you more money in the long term than you could ever spend on the blog post, okay? All right? Now, so you get that transcript, okay? Run over to, you know, take a still shot from the video, okay? Or embed the video at the top, but go to your website, make a blog post. That's all you got to do. Take the transcript, make the blog post, edit it out and clean it up really, really fast, okay? Take the embed from the YouTube video, write a little paragraph description and put the transcript with some, a bulleted list and boom, you have a blog post. That's what Joss and I have been doing for five years now on our podcast. If you go to fliplifestyle.com, all you're going to see is quick show notes, bulleted list, transcript, all the text from the actual audio, and you're going to see the audio file. Okay. So you can listen to it or you can read it. And you wouldn't believe how many people read our transcript. We get messages all the time. If we do surveys and stuff like that, where people are like, yeah, I don't even listen. I just read through the transcript. Okay. And Google doesn't know the difference between our transcript and a blog post. We go through and edit it and clean it up a little bit where it reads a little smoother than a transcript, but that's just lots of text, keyword rich, powerful SEO driven text that we're talking about. If somebody asks us, how do I create a sales funnel on the podcast? We, we talk about it for 20 minutes. So we've got this huge amount of text about it and we have all kinds of SEO. We can take keywords from that, put it in our tagging and we're good to go. Okay. So just from recording for 20 minutes and just for uploading your file to like rev.com, you created an audio file or you created a YouTube video. Guess what? You can be found on YouTube now. You created a podcast. Guess what? You can be found on iTunes now. You wrote a blog post. Guess what? Google's going to find you and it's going to index you in search. Okay. And you've already linked them all together. You've embedded the YouTube video with the text. It's on the podcast when you release it. So all this stuff is happening. There's internal linking and you're exploding all this content and you're giving yourself triple the ways to be found than you ever could have before. Okay. So um, Google doesn't care about duplicated content. That's, I see the question right here. Like it doesn't care about anything else. It just looks for text. It looks for relevance. If you can solve a problem and it can show that to someone else, they like Google better. So they will bring their stuff to your site. We have built our entire business this way. It totally works 100% um, and it never fails. We get just as much search traffic as we do anything else. And uh, it's all from the text. All, go look at our podcast right now. Go to the last, go to our fliplifestyle.com you'll see this is how we create our blog posts, okay? Now, you can do this in different directions. Let's say you're a writer. Let's say you're a really good writer, okay? And let's say that you thoroughly enjoy um, the blog process and you like to write your blog posts, okay? Well, all you have to do then is just go back and just take your blog post, flip on the camera and say, hey, I want to share my latest blog post with you and read it. Read it on YouTube. It's just a vlog is all it is. And then you take that and you can uh, you can uh, release that as a podcast and people can listen to it and they have a way to consume uh, the content. OK, so you've spent about 30 minutes either way to, to basically create audio, video and text for people to consume however they want. So tell me the bet. What type of content do you like to consume? Everybody tell me real quick in the chat. I, I like audio content only, almost exclusively, unless I'm following up with a little reading to, to, to uh, you know, reinforce it. So, like, what kind of content do you like? Like, what kind of content do you like? To, uh, Shay loves podcasts. Knew that one. T Tanya loves podcasts. Uh, what about uh, who loves blogs? Who loves to read? Like, Jocelyn loves to read. She wants to read blog posts. Jocelyn's a reader. That's all she likes to do. Okay. Um, some people are very visual. They like video, audio, and text. TC Miller's is text, okay? So everybody has a different, you know, means to communicate. So if you only blog, then you're probably cutting out two-thirds of the audience that would normally follow your stuff, right? You've got to explode your content, and this isn't that much work. Spend 20 minutes making the video. Change it to an MP3. Upload, create the post. We're talking like one hour of work, okay, at best. now. Then what you can do 
is you can take that one hour of work that's going to give you all that content. You can take and write an email describing it, and you can email it to your list. Right. So you take about 20 minutes to make a YouTube video. You take about 15 minutes to convert it over to an MP3 and upload the audio. You get the tech, the transcript back. You take about 15 minutes to put a blog post up. Right. And then you take about 10 minutes and you email your list. Boom. Right. And you can even batch that email. You could send them the, Hey, I have a new YouTube video. Hey, Wednesday, I have a new blog podcast. Hey, Friday, I have a new blog post, <clears throat> three different emails, all three of the same pieces of content all in different ways. 90% of them are only, or 10% of them are going to listen to one of them. 20% are going to listen to the other, 20% of the other, and 20% aren't going to open it, right? Or whatever, 40%. So it doesn't matter. You can send the same thing three times a week. People always say, what do I talk about? How do I email people three times a week? There you go. Hey, I've got a new podcast about this. Hey, did you catch my new YouTube video about this? Hey, I wrote a blog post just for you about this. I got the full transcript of my video. Go check it out, right? So that gives you an excuse to email your list three times a week because you've got three pieces of content. All right. So 60 minutes for four pieces of content on four different platforms, uh, video, YouTube, audio, podcast, blog, text, emailing your list. Right. And you're hitting people in a number of different directions, but you only put one hour of work into it if you do it right. Right. If you outsource it, it gets it even easier because then you just make the video drop it into Dropbox, you give them this plan and you let your virtual assistants do everything for you. That's what we do, right? When we record a podcast, we drop it into a folder. We never look at it again. It comes out on our podcast. It gets blogged on our thing. It's shared on our thing. Uh, the only thing I usually do after that is write an email to the list if we have a new podcast to check it out, okay? So if it only takes you about an hour to do those four pieces of content, right? That means you can do 12 weeks of content in about six to 12 hours. That's how you take one week and batch all your content over the next 12 weeks, right? You could literally write four blog posts, okay? And you could one week release a YouTube video, one week re release a podcast, one week release the blog post, and you could just roll those out over a month if you wanted to. And then you, the last week, you do a roundup post that tells the links to all three, and there are three various things, you literally in three or four hours have 12 weeks of content that you're rolling out. The problem that people get into is they're like, oh, but yeah, but nobody wants to listen and watch and read. And that's the point. Nobody wants to do all three. They only want to do one or two. So you've got to give them a way to consume all that content. You can repeat it. You can double it. It doesn't matter. You can just release as much as you want. Um, we do this too, uh, even with our Q&As. We record our premium Q&As so only, you know, only premium members can come to our Q&As and ask direct questions in real time, get feedback, get help. Boom, you're off to the races. Take your next step, right? Our premium member calls are our most popular thing that happens inside of the Flip Your Life community. But what we do is we take old ones. We let them kind of ripen for a few weeks, right? We'll go back over about, you know, 12 weeks or so, and we'll grab an old Q&A, and we cut those up. That's our entire YouTube strategy uh, this year is we're just cutting those up and do different uh, YouTube videos. So we're just repurposing that content. We're taking it, we're clipping it up into little individual videos. We might answer 15 questions on a member call. So we're gonna boom, 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 cut those up into 15 YouTube videos, write a title, write a description, we're done. Then we're gonna take that, we're gonna embed it over on our site. We're gonna copy the title, copy the description, tag it up, boom, we release another blog post, okay? We've got, we've got a podcast that we used to do called the Q&A with S&J, right? And we used to record the, uh, we used to get like, we have we had speak pipes set up and people could ask us a question, we'd answer questions. It's still there. We just stopped doing it a while back because it was a lot of work. We're just going to take the audio from all those, we have, we've answered over 1,500 questions on member calls. So we're having those cut up right now and we're just going to release them as a podcast. We're going to fire that up with a Q&A with S&J podcast again. We'll have two podcasts going the Flip Lifestyle Flagship Podcast and the Q&A with S&J. And we have basically enough content to go a, Q a question every single day for God knows how long, like three years, four years, because we've already just got all, we've got them all cut up. So just from taking that video, we, we did the Q&A with S&J on YouTube. We used to do it on YouTube. Just take the, all we got to do is take that video from our Q&As, take, cut a question out, release it on YouTube. Take that exact same question, release it on the Q&A with S&J podcast, then uh, take the transcript from the little Q&A, boom, put it over, and we got a blog post. 
I can totally automate that. It doesn't require me or Jocelyn. It's a super simple process. Um, we're about to hire um, what we call a web content manager to make sure that that happens over and over with all this content. And they're just going to release all that at once. So you can totally create a system where you don't even have to be involved except, except for the actual recording of the original video. Okay. Some of you, I, I, I talked to somebody the other day. I can't remember who it was. Uh, it was on our podcast. It'll come out in like two weeks. I think it was the lawyer. Um, her name was Sarah. So when you hear Sarah's podcast, she was trying to write three big, long blog posts every single week. And we were like, stop it. Don't do that. Write one blog post, then read it and release a podcast and go on your and talk about it on YouTube and tell them to go check it out. Like you've got to be able to explode your content. You got to be able to create one thing and then get it on a bunch of different platforms. If you're ever going to create enough content to get noticed online. Okay. Now, so the first thing that you got to do is figure that out. Like that's, we call that the content explosion, video, audio, and text. Start at video or start it at the text and go in between. Okay. So you can either work video, take the audio, get the text, or you can write the blog post, read it, release it on video and on podcasts. Going both ways, you've got to be able to get on all these platforms. Um, and if you don't have that base level of content, you're not going to be able to do the next part. Okay. So the next part is called syndication. All right. The next step is syndication. Okay. Batch it and automate it. Okay. So here's the cool thing. If you start with the content explosion model where you start with a video, strip it for audio, get the text, you can do a lot of cool things with all that stuff that you've already created without having to do any more work. Okay. One, you can share it natively on a lot of different platforms. Like if you make a YouTube video, like say you do a YouTube live like this, I could take this video right now. I could download it and I could immediately upload it to Facebook and LinkedIn. Okay. So I don't have to make new, I don't have to go do a YouTube live and a Facebook live. I don't have to make a YouTube video and a Facebook video. I make one video one time and I share it and I syndicate it in a lot of different places. Okay. So that would be something I could do with the video video, the podcast. Here's what's cool about the podcast. If you use something like Libsyn, you can just go turn on a bunch of little platforms. You can upload it once you can share it to iTunes, Stitcher, Google podcast, Himalaya. Um, we just, uh, we're on, uh, what's it called? Uh, not Pandora. What's the other one called? Uh, Spotify. You can go to Spotify. You can go to Pandora. You can go to all these places where podcasts are appearing now because you've got this one little audio file that you pulled off the video. Like it's totally easy to do. And all you have to do is syndicate it. Okay. The text, you can take your blog post and create that. You can go separate from your video post. You can just copy all the text. Uh, from your blog post, from your transcript, whatever, and be like, hey, guys, here's the latest uh, transcript for my podcast and share the full text on Facebook, LinkedIn, article directories. Um, you could put them in other places, anywhere you want to go. So you can syndicate all of that stuff, right? You can even take the same videos and audios that you release free and you can curate them inside of your member area to provide value to your members. Remember, members don't pay you for your content. They pay you to guide them to the next step. They pay you to curate the content in a consumable way that they can get and use and help to take their next step, right? So you could say, hey guys, I have this great video. Um, I just put it in the, I just did a great video about sales funnels. I put it in the sales funnel course area. Check it out now. They may never see it on Facebook. They may never see it in your email list. They may never see it on your blog. I doubt your members go to your blog every day, right? You guys don't go to fliplifestyle.com every day. So if I make a cool YouTube video that's really popular and I know is really good, I'm just going to add it to the right area inside of the Flip Your Life Blueprint to make sure you find it, make sure you see it. I can tell my members about it. And that's what you charge for. You charge for curation. You charge for, hey, I'm looking out for you. You charge for, look at this thing I just created um, and accountability. So that's, you can put it there. You can use the same stuff everywhere, right? And finally, you can now take this and share it all over social media, right? You could literally just share it everywhere. You could take the, vi take the video that you made on YouTube, go share it on Facebook, go share it on Twitter, go share it on Reddit, go share it on Pinterest, go do all those things. Tomorrow, share the blog post, right? Tomorrow, share the podcast. It doesn't matter. You can share these things in a hundred different places. So by making that first 20 minute video, okay. And if you do this right, like, let me, let me give you a weekly schedule on how something like this could work. Okay. 
All right. So let's say on Monday you go in and you record four YouTube videos, four 20 minute videos. Right. So maybe you spend four hours of work that day. The first hour you research one, you record a 20 minute video. The second hour you research one, you do a 20 minute video, third hour, fourth hour. Four hours. If you can't put four hours into your business to record four videos, you might be doing the wrong thing with your life. You got to be able to put in some time. You got to be able to put in some work. You got to be able to suck it up. But four hours is so long. No, it's not. We're batching content. Okay. So watch this. Now, all you have to do, right? Tuesday, go in and strip all the audio files, get those uploaded for the transcripts. Okay. Wednesday, take all four of those uh, audio files when the transcripts get back and go set up your blog posts. Okay. Thursday and Friday, schedule all that out, right? So you've got a blog post every week, a podcast every week, set the schedule for the videos to release every week for the next four weeks, and then schedule all your sharing, schedule each one of those on uh, Facebook, on Twitter, on all those things. You just spent one week to do a month of content, right? If you get real ambitious, do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, make 12 videos. Okay. Upload it all, strip all the audio, get it all scheduled on Thursday and Friday. You just created 12 weeks of content in one week. Okay. And no, it doesn't. And I'm going to take questions here in just a second, but, but that is how you can explode content. You don't have to do all of those things with all of your content, right? Jocelyn and I, with our podcast, we do the audio and the transcript, and then we just upload the actual audio file on YouTube over in the podcast section. Okay. All right now, but with our, our member Q and a, we're cutting those up. We're turning those into a podcast and we're going to release those on uh, YouTube, on our podcast and on the website. So we're going to go full content explosion. All of it's going to be shared in Twitter. We're going to be doing all those things. It's why we get noticed because we create so much content. OK, you can get by with writing one blog post a week and maybe sharing it on social every day. Right. But if you really want to be prolific. If you really want to get noticed faster, you've got to throw more mud on the wall to see what sticks. You can't guess and do enough research to know exactly what's going to work. It's all an educated guess. So you've got to have some kind of crazy content explosion schedule that you can follow that allows you to batch content and allows you to get that stuff out there and allows you to get noticed by the people in your niche. That is the tactical plan that goes with the strategy I taught you last week of being consistent, prolific, and relentless. That's how we tactically make so much content with so little work. That's how me and Jocelyn batch content for a week. And then for the next four or five weeks, we can do whatever we want. We can promote. We can go take uh, Friday. We're going to take the kids to Dollywood to go to the water park next week. Uh, in two weeks, we're going to San Diego. Like that's why we can do that. You know why? Because all of our stuff's done. That's when your team can have freedom. Our uh, executive assistant, Kathy, isn't she's on vacation right now. But guess what? Everything's blogged. Everything's YouTube. Everything's podcast is ready. We batched all this stuff in a week. We got it ready and it's all ready to roll out while she's gone. Nobody has to worry about anything this week. Jocelyn and I spent today. Um, we got interviewed on another person's podcast. Um, I'm doing this training with you guys. Right. And Jocelyn, and I sat out on the porch today, sipping on tea and coffee. And we worked on about two for about two hours on our funnel for episode 300 of our podcast because we're going to have a very specific opt in uh, and we're going to kick off a new lead strategy um, at episode 300. So we had time to work on that. We had time to do what we wanted today because all that other content stuff was done like in a one or two week period. And we don't have to worry about it again for like 12 to 14 weeks. OK, so this is what I want to do. This is what this strategy can do for you. And I'll, I'll email you this uh, link this later. Um, I'll go over the steps again real quick. Um, uh, to make sure that you got them. I'll try to email this document to y'all tonight too. But this relieves stress. It makes you more prolific. It helps you create more content. It frees you up to do what's important, promote and relentlessly sell. You've got to create the content. So you might as well create as much content as you can as fast as possible. All right. So step one, do the research. Step two, make the YouTube video. Step three, strip the audio, turn it into a podcast. Uh, strip, uh, step, uh, four is get the transcript, turn everything into a blog post. Step five is write an email for your list. The only thing that changed, you can use the same email with three different subject lines and three different links. That's all you got to do to get people to different content. Yeah. The body doesn't matter. It can be the same at that point. You're then going to syndicate it, share that video everywhere that lets you upload a video. 
Share that podcast everywhere. That let's show a podcast. Make sure you're in every major podcast network. You don't know where people are going to listen. Okay. Uh, the big ones right now are iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Himalaya, and um, there's one more. Uh, la, 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 la. Ah, there's one more. But those are the big ones. Okay. All right. Next, take the text. Use it in different places. Use it in emails. Use it in Facebook. Use it in LinkedIn. Write articles in article directories and see if you can get your content everywhere else. Always share a link back to your thing and then share it. Share it everywhere you can. You should have a list of 12 social media networks that you share everything on every day. Okay. And you can totally do that all with batching. You could batch for the first month of each quarter, be done, and then promote for the next eight weeks of each quarter. And you get eight weeks of solid promotion. So you could create all this content if you wanted to in July, and then you could syndicate it and promote it on social media in uh, August and September. doesn't matter. Get ahead, batch it, schedule it ahead. Okay. All right. So I saw some questions up here. If you got any questions about this, uh, con this tactical part of the content strategy, this is how you actually do the stuff that makes you consistent and prolific is you make one piece of content, reuse it, repurpose it, share it everywhere. Okay. That's how you, that's how you be consistent. What you need to do is you need to be consistent and prolific. This is how you do it. If you don't do some of this, you're going to always feel behind the eight ball and overwhelmed by your content. But let me look through here and see if I've got, um, there were some questions. Okay, uh, let's see here. If you got any questions or I missed a question, go ahead and type it in right now. I'm going to go all the way up to the top and skim down. All right, let's see. Questions. Seems like we need to be doing audio, Jennifer says. Um, audio is the most passive um, best use of time if you're going to make any kind of content. I know some people aren't as comfortable with audio as maybe that we are, but audio is really, really important. It's why the biggest books on the planet have audio books. You know, it's why they spend billions of dollars on sound for great movies. Um, it's why podcasts are so popular, right? I would even argue that half the reason that YouTube is so popular is because of all the audio content on there. A lot of it is just discussions and po politics and conspiracy theories and stuff like that. It's stuff you don't have to watch. You can watch it, right? But a lot of times we're just listening to YouTube just like we would listen to podcasts. And I can't imagine not creating audio content in 2019. Here's why. One, it's one, it's passive. People can listen to it anywhere. They can take it with them in their car. They can listen while they're on a walk. They don't they can listen while they're cooking dinner. Like it just gives them a way to uh, to not have to hold a book or not have to keep their eyes on a screen. They could be at a playground with their kids and they can listen to the audio Two, It's really intimate. Like it's long form. Um, it's more discussion based. It's not just like reading a book. Even audio books are not as um intimate as a podcast so people really get to know you and they can build a relationship with you and it's really easy to gain a lot of trust when you're in an audio format um, also too i think it's the easiest kind of content to create uh, if, if you know your subject matter if you know what you want to say you just talk if you've got a co-host or a guest you just talk to them and you just record it and then share the conversation with everybody else. The, the most popular podcasts on iTunes are very conversational. Uh, Joe Rogan, uh, people like uh, Ben Shapiro, uh, what's the crime, crime junkies, like the, the top podcasts, regardless if you like them or not, like the reason they're the best is because they're the, they're conversational. They're easy to relate to the people who are, you know, saying all the words. And sometimes you just don't get that with text, right? Like with text, you know, some, with text, you can lose context really quick. Have you ever sent someone a text message or a Facebook message and they took it out of context and got mad at you, right? Or have you ever sent someone a text and, like, have you ever sent your spouse a text and they totally, like, hey, I, I need you to go to the store and get, you know, uh, five things for me. And they come back with the wrong things, right? Like, you know, though, you, can, you can lose meaning in text, okay, if you're not careful. And video is restrictive because you have to have your eyeballs on it. You can't watch a video while you drive, but you can listen to a podcast. So, yes, audio is very important. I don't think you have to start with audio like we do. Um, even our courses started with audio. Like, go watch one of our courses when we get off here in the Flip Your Life Blueprint. I actually recorded most of those on audio only. I, wrote, I sat down, researched, bulleted list. And I just started talking and I just read from the bulleted list and talked and filled in the gaps and went through it. And then I actually paid someone 
to create the PowerPoints and make the videos for me, right? So it looks like I'm flipping through a PowerPoint slide, but I didn't make any of those slides. I didn't, uh, there's a couple of them I did, but not all of them. Like most of them are just someone else made the slides, someone else went through and lined it up with the audio. I just started with audio because I can literally do audio. If I need to record something for an hour, I can do it in an hour. It's done, over, period. So yes, audio is really, really important. Um, all the other forms are, are too. People do want to talk to them, but audio is just a great place to uh, to start from, okay? All right, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Raj says, not a fan of reading blogs. I'm not either. I'm not either at all. Um, Shay says, I only read blogs when I research. There's another vote for audio. Okay. All right. Let me scroll down to the bottom here. All right. Let's see. Priscilla says, would love to meet you in San Diego. We live north of there. Keep an eye out on your inbox. I'll be talking more about that. We might have a meetup while we're out there. All right. Um, who would you recommend for PowerPoint slides? <clears throat> Lene, Lene, I just go to Fiverr.com and I find the person that's available. I don't care how good the slides are. I'm not picky. Um, so I'm just going to go find someone who makes PowerPoints. I'm going to say, hey, I've got an audio file. I need you to make PowerPoint slides for it and just line it up with the audio. Um, I get a quote. Maybe I'll ask for two people and I just use whoever's available and who can get it to me the quickest. Okay. So Fiverr.com, Upwork.com has some people that do freelance and stuff like that. So those are two great websites where you can find it. I don't have a specific person because um, some of you are going to cringe like a fork on a chalkboard here, but design doesn't matter as much as you think it does. They just have to look pretty. Like they just have to be done and they have to match the audio files. So it's really just words on a screen with a picture, right? So it doesn't matter if the picture's perfect, if anything's perfect. I just go find someone who's got a couple good slide decks in their repertoire. I've seen that they've done it right before. Boom, I go back and done it. I've used multiple uh, freelancers. Kind of like a transcript. Like, it doesn't matter who does the transcript. They're typing the words, right? So we just want to make sure that they get, are very accurate. JJ Mayo asks, do you organize all of this in Google Drive or uh, Dropbox? We uh, use Google Apps for business. We are a business customer of Google. So all of our company's email runs through Gmail. Uh, we use Google Drive for everything. Um, we only use Google Documents um, when we create documents. We don't use Microsoft Word at all. It all has to be created in Google Drive. Everybody on the team has to use Google Drive, okay? Um, so that's what, I mean, I just, it's just folders, alphabetical order. I've got like, I have four, I have literally have on my desktop, um, I don't know if I can show you this. Oh, let me look. I don't know if you can see it. And I don't know if my new computer sees it. All right, let's see. Like a, uh, on my, I have uh, my files in my computer, like on my uh, Google Drive, I have four folders, audio, documents, images, and video. That's it. That's what I got. So everything, everything gets stored in there. Okay. Um, that's where everything is. So everything is just happens on my, uh, everything happens on my desktop or happens right there in those three folders. And then inside those, it might say like, look, I saw a podcast, travel videos, you know, and um, I just have a bunch of folders and I organize it. I actually, um, I'll tell you honestly, though, I consider our website our main place of storage for everything. So, you know, like our website's where all of our podcasts live. Um, it's where our videos live. It's, if I write a blog post, that's where it is, right? So, um, you know, WordPress is a, is a website software, but it's also primarily a content management software. Um, our systems and procedures for our company happen on a website. We have a blog that's set up. It's private. You can you know, have username and password. Um, I don't even have a domain name out there for it for everybody. But just our team, we whenever we create a new system or procedure, we put it in WordPress and we tag it, categorize it, and then we it's easy for everybody to find when they need to do something. So, uh, But it's all in Dropbox. All right. Carolyn says, same question as JJ. Where is all this organized? Don't get confused with the guys. Think about this. Um, Let's let me let me show you the workflow how I would do this. Okay, one, do a YouTube live. Two, I would download the YouTube live and I would put it in a folder in my Google Drive. Okay, for me, I would then share it with my podcast editor. He pulls the audio, he turns it into a podcast, and then our assistant Kathy would go take it and get the transcript and turn it into a blog post. That's it. We downloaded a video file, we saved it in Google Drive. We, we converted it to an MP3. It is now an audio file. We get a transcript and save that document in the same folder. They're all there. 
Now it's just a matter of where you put them. We make a blog post. We make a YouTube video. We make a Facebook thing. You just go get those assets and release them into the world, okay? So don't make this like, don't overcomplicate any of this. This is as caveman simple as it gets. I literally have four folders that say video, audio, images, text, right? And then we just save those. You just make the video, download it, and start cutting audio and text out of it, and you're done, okay? If the transcript idea like drives some of you crazy too, you can totally write like a five paragraph blog post to summarize your video and then just share the embed. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Let me scroll down. Shane, I drew a blank about coming up with topics to talk about, about Abacus mind math. I've gone through Quora and answered all the questions there at, on that topic. Most of them repeat themselves. I feel like there's only so much to talk about directly on the topic. How would you suggest tackling step one, researching the topic? How related uh, or unrelated they can be? Since we are helping children four to 12, is any topic related to that age group? I'll tell you exactly what I would do, dude. I would do math problems, right? I would just, all right, guys, on today's quick video, we're going to do three plus three plus 12 or whatever and use the abacus to do the math problem, right? Like, there's an infinite number of examples that you can give on using the, that thing. And like, all you need is a little two minute video every day. Right. And that could be easily turned into a blog post, right. With screenshots that showed the different placements of the slides. So, I mean, you could totally, totally just do math problems, like use the thing for what it's for. Demonstration is the most powerful form of content, right? Like what's more powerful. Someone saying you should start a website or someone showing you how to set up WordPress, right? Um, or like, you know, like uh, a lot of WordPress people who teach how to use WordPress, they'll do like quick tips on how to do WordPress. I got a buddy of mine and he's got a, uh, he teaches uh, Scrivener. He's got a website called Learn Scrivener Fast. If you're a writer, it's the best writing software on the planet, but it's really complex. And what he does for content, like on YouTube and stuff, he's like, hey, here's your Scrivener tip of the day like a one minute video hey you want to learn more come buy my thing so like you know like have a kid and you're showing them how to do a problem on uh, make up a math problem or make up a counting thing or make up a whatever and use the um, abacus to do a quick thing they'll smile and be like cool that's it that's all you got to do that, that's your whole content right and then you can have a little quick thing like here's a tip or whatever you know don't be afraid content wants to be free Curated content does not want to be free. Cura curated content requires payment. Uh, content itself wants to be free. So anything inside your membership community is fair game to release as content, right? Like people want to, like if the if the if the problem you're solving in your content is, huh, I want to learn how to teach my kid how to use the abacus, or I want to learn how to use the abacus, then show them how to use the abacus, and then bring them in for a more organized tutorial that's curated, and you can train them and do whatever. I don't be afraid to release that stuff. It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, Lene says, so if I create an audio YouTube podcast type video and I talk more casually in point format, and then I have written out a blog post that is much more exact, is that okay? Yes, it's okay. It doesn't matter if they don't match because the goal, the goal really is just to create the content as fast as possible and get it out there in multiple formats, right? So like, that's why if you have a really, like maybe you do write a really formal blog post, but you know it, well then just go record the video and now you have video and audio, you're done, okay? Um, it's just, if you don't want, that's if you're a writer, if you want to write it like that, okay? Uh, Kate Erickson, uh, uh, John Lee Dumas's significant other, um, she had a podcast for years where all she did was she wrote a blog post and she read it on air. And then she had, uh, I remember she had, a, then she had a YouTube video where it was like, slides with quotes as she was reading it right so it'd be like an instagram looking picture and then they actually use those same slides as their instagram shares to promote that blog post so there's so many layers you can do here to kind of repeat the process you know what i'm saying like like you can build it out where you literally might you know do a youtube video and then you just have pictures from the youtube video with a quote from it and that's like how you share it on instagram right so you can just you just keep repurposing reusing peeling back layers of the onion and stop working so hard trying to create so many things. Like you can't be everywhere. You have to be in one really good place and then use that everywhere, right? And that's the tactics that'll help you like explode your content out even more, okay? Uh, Monty says, I use Google speech to text. It's on every Android device and it's 95% accurate. Start every document by talking 
to my phone or tablet. I've tried that in the past. It didn't work as good for me, Monty. I don't know why. Um, but uh, you can definitely get that uh, audio. You just need someone to edit it. That might be cheaper, actually, is to uh, re- use the Google speech to text while you're doing your podcast. And then uh, maybe you can just have someone edit it and read through it and make it clean. Um, we have found that the best and fastest way to do it is uh, I use a, I, we make our podcast. We upload it to rev.com within an hour. It's back. We got the transcript and it's almost flawless. Um, then our uh, assistant reads through it to make sure that it's clean. She actually um, each week will listen to the podcast and go through the transcript to make sure it's right. Okay. So yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't care how you do it. It's, I'm just saying like it is possible to, to go from audio to video to text very, very quickly. Um, and that's the only three kinds of content. If you can be on YouTube, iTunes, and your blog, and then share it on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit, LinkedIn, maybe uh, Pinterest, then if you can just do that, if you could just get it down to do those things, like you would be like everywhere. You'd be prolific. You'd be getting found in multiple like different places. And uh, we even have like the same strategy, like when we go on other people's podcasts, like like we're not just reinventing the wheel every time we go on an interview. We went on a podcast today and um, it was called uh, Adult Struggles or something. It was like, it was basically a podcast for like millennials and they were asking like older people, like how to adult better. It was pretty hilarious. And uh, cause we were the older people there. I felt good about that. I was, I was the elder, the, the town, the village elder today in a, on a podcast interview. That's what I get for turning 41. But the, uh, well, we the stories we told were the same stories we tell on all the podcasts, right? Like, and she was like, wow, your story is so like crisp and clean and you tell it so well. And, you know, and I remember hearing you guys on other podcasts and I did some research before I talked to you and, you know, wow, you just tell those stories so good. And I'm like, yeah, because that's the stories we're going to tell. Like we want to, these are, this is our story. So like, we're not just going to reinvent the wheel every time and change everything. Like we're going to repurpose the great stories that we know resonate with people everywhere we go to make sure that they hear this. We want to make sure they hear it. Like the reason we go on this new, the reason you share it, the reason you put it on YouTube instead of, and your podcast and your blog is you want to give as many people as possible in your space, a chance to hear what you're talking about and what you're selling. And if you don't spread your wings a little bit and be more prolific, not enough people are going to hear you to make a difference. Okay. All right. Let's see. Um, what else? Looks like we're good. I think that might, did I miss anybody's questions? I don't know if I did. I'm scrolling back up here. If anyone else has any questions, I movie for editing. Pretty good. I don't think I missed anything. Start adding voiceover audio. Yeah, right. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it looks good. All right, I think that's all the questions that I've got for right now. I don't see anything else in here. So, you know, go back and listen to this, and I, and I want to challenge you this week. <laughs> Try this, okay? I want... I'm going to challenge everyone in here to go make a YouTube video. If you have a Gmail account, you have a YouTube channel, right? So go set up your YouTube channel or do it on Facebook. That's even better. Do a Facebook live. I want you to go do a Facebook live. Okay. And I just want you to download the video and use your computer to convert it to an MP3, right? Take it to rev.com and upload it. Just get a transcript. Okay. Now you have the text, the audio and the video. Go do something with it. Go play with that. Look how easy it actually is to do that, right? Take that same video and go share it on LinkedIn, okay? Take that text and make a blog post out of it or make a Facebook post out of it, okay? Um, Take that audio file and uh, uh, go to anchor.com and set up a podcast. Just upload it. See what happens. Like, you'll see that it's not as complex or hard as you think it is once you play with it for a minute. And then your wheels will start turning and you can start creating, like, more content, like, You know, if you can make a blog post a week and you can succeed in a year, what if you could create three pieces of content a week and succeed in six months? Like, what if you get half the time, right? Or like, if you have only audio listeners on your podcast, what if you put your videos on YouTube? What if you had a blog post too? Could you get more traffic, right, on in different places? Could you find new people to listen to your stuff and succeed faster because at the the heart of this is always you are a content marketer you are selling memberships you're selling courses you are selling coaching you're selling workouts you're selling services i don't care what you're selling you are online and online marketers are content marketers and the more content you create the more likely you are to be found the better content you create 
the better people will stick around. Okay? So make sure you're doing that. All right? All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in today. Next week, we are going to be jumping deep into sales funnels. Okay? So, you know, we're going to take all the stuff that we've learned, and we're actually going to map out what your funnel looks like. This is something that Joss and I, you know, our funnel basically is uh, create a podcast, get people on the podcast to opt in or buy, um, and then get people to buy to uh, be members and stay members. That's our that's our funnel. I can show you our whole funnel, right? Um, and I'm going to teach you more about the concept of sales funnels, like how to actually make a sales funnel, what to think about with your sales funnels, um, and how to use all this content as the, the think of the all your content is like the big pitcher of water that's pouring leads into your sales funnel, right? All right. So if you've got a big pitcher and you're pouring it into the sales funnel, that's your YouTube pitcher. And then you've got over here your blog pitcher. And then you've got your podcast pitcher. And then you've got your social pitcher. And then you've got your ad picture, right? Like, like we're gonna we're talking all everything to this point has been the product at the bottom of the funnel, all the traffic and audience and content, all the content marketing that's creating traffic for the funnel. Now I'm going to teach you about the sales funnel, okay? And then what we're going to do when we get to Flip Your Life Lives, we're going to talk a lot about traffic, like getting traffic in, paid traffic, uh, how to uh, really get your content to the next level for SEO, and uh, also how closing the sales and pitching, right? The sales funnel I'm going to teach you. We're going to talk about pitching your products and pitching your stuff um, at the event. But we do want to cover sales funnels before we get there because, like I said, guys, I don't understand – what you're doing if you're not getting your work done <laughs> like right like you need to have a product or service before flip your life live you need to have content generating emails and leads for that product and putting them into the, a basic sales funnel like you can walk into flip your life live with that and then it's all about pouring gas on the fire but you got to go around and pick up the sticks and you got to go and put them in the fire pit and you got to get the rocks and put it all around and shore up your infrastructure before you literally can pour gas on the fire so get to work, do your stuff, and uh, and we'll get after it. Monty said, "Can you show us how you draw the sales funnel?" That's exactly what we're going to do uh, next week. We're going to I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. I'm going to show you my version of a sales funnel. Um, I think of sales funnels a little differently than most people do. Ours are a lot simpler um, than a lot of people's. Um, there is a training about sales funnels if you want to check that out. Um, but I'm going to really focus hard on creating sales funnels on the fly. Like um, one thing that we're really going to try to do a better job in our brand is using the interview of our podcast. Like say we interview somebody on Tuesday. That's really the front end of a new sales funnel. And we're going to do a better job of adding a piece of content in between that to get an opt in to get people to join where we can piggyback off of our interviews. So I'm going to show you how to string together uh, sales funnels on the fly and uh, and talk to you a little bit about how every new piece of content, every time you go to somebody else's website, um, is actually the start of a new sales funnel. Okay, You don't have one sales funnel. Every piece of content is the start of a new sales funnel. It just might happen to pour into the same tank, right? But um, we're going to talk more about that next week, okay? All right, guys. Uh, get out there and get some work done this week. Get out, uh, Make sure that you're creating lots of content. Make sure you're promoting your products every day. If you don't have a product created, you need to create that product, right? And if you are consistently and prolifically and relentlessly creating, promoting, and selling, and then tactically, if you are taking your content you create and squeezing every last drop of value out of it, you are eventually going to get noticed. It's just a matter of time. And uh, that's how we've built every one of our businesses. That's how we've seen every single person who has succeeded in the Flip Your Life community do it. And we know that you can do it too. And yes, Shay, I'm always talking to you and I'm telling you, get your product done and start making content. <laughs> so, all right, guys, have a great day. Hope Monday was good to you. We will see you next week. Keep an eye on this page. I will uh, update by Saturday or Sunday when the next training is next week. And I'll shoot you an email out for that too. If you are new here and you just bought a ticket last week, we had a couple new people uh, coming in to buy tickets. You need to go down right below this video, right below this chat. All of the trainings that we have done are on this page and in order. Okay. So check those out. Maybe between now and Flip Your Life Live, we are only a couple weeks away from our icebreaker sessions. Looking forward to those so that we can get to know you better on a personal level. And before you know it, we will be in Lexington, Kentucky 
together. It's going to be awesome. All right, guys, have a great day. We'll see you next week.